Cool. Hey everyone. So we're gonna look at um, building some Rainbow plugins, but I think everyone here has anyone not used Rainbow yet? Everyone's used Rainbow, right? You have not used Rainbow. Okay, cool. Have you been to any of these workshops yet? Ah, oh, welcome. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, we'll be taking a fairly high level, high level overview look at building plugins in Rainbow, but then we'll look at some of the little quirks and features that we can that we can play with when we're exporting VSTs or just working in Rainbow in Max. So um, whether you've used Rainbow or not, hopefully you get something out of it. Um, if you'd like to go here, um, Zeoco Notebook Rainbow Plugins, or if you just go to Zeoco and then go to Notebook, the top one will be Plugins, making a plugin with Rainbow. And there's some reference material here. Um, but the main thing that we probably that you probably want to go, kind of grab is this link here, which is the patch that we'll be working from today. Um, I'm taking a, a screen recording of this, so none of your faces will be on it. But if you speak loudly, you might get picked up by the microphone. So FYI, um, and that will probably end up on the on this blog post. So. Don't ask embarrassing questions, I suppose. Um, and um, I'll keep this updated. So if, if I do this presentation anywhere else, then there'll be more resources added to this as we go. Um, has anyone not found this found this patch? Do you have Rainbow and Max installed? Sweet. Cool. So. General plan for today, we're going to look at exporting some VST3s. You can export an AU as well. Um, I think what what would be good to get to is if we can build some VSTs and then you can load them into whatever whatever DAWs that you tend to work with. Um, does anyone use any really weird DAWs? Uh, like, I don't know, weird? <laughs> What's the weirdest one you use? Yeah. <laughs> Does yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If we can see it, see some VSTs running and some weird stuff, that'd be great. Um, I've been playing around with, with Muse Score a little bit, so you could potentially use um, Muse Score as a way of using dots and loops to sequence your electronic music. Pretty cool. Um, and so that's one thing that we'll look at exporting the VSTs. Um, I'm going to look, show you where you can get some resources for building plugins without having to patch them together from scratch. Um, we're going to look at some of the microtonality features that are built into Rainbow, and um, then some of the quirks about composing in Rainbow. So Rainbow has some particular limitations, um, which make it interesting to work in um, compositionally, I, I think. Um, cool. So here's the patch that we'll be working with. It's sort of broken into three sections. The one on the this part on the right, we're going to start here by building a plugin and an effect plugin and plugging it in here. But before we get there, I'll show you what else is going on. We've got a just a, a polysynth here, um, and this is actually using um, a microtonal scale, and we've got a drop down to pick some different different um, tunings here. Things get pretty weird, which is cool. Um, this is the same, except it's using some of the per voice parameters to create some um, note sequences, and we can pick a pick a scale here, and we can also pick subdivisions for each voice. So each voice has a separate um, separate rhythm generator. And then here's sort of a bonus if we have time, we can look at how to um, encode chords in, um, as signals because when we're working in Rainbow, we're, we've only got signals and so um, we don't have, don't have the same tools that we'd normally use for working, working if we're working in Max, for example. Um, okay, so to start, 
I just want to show you where some resources are that you, so you've got some building blocks to start building some rainbow patches without without needing to get into the nitty gritty like we've been doing so far. Um, if you go to the file menu in Max and go down to do, 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 um, package manager, manager, show package manager. There are a whole bunch of sort of extras and add-ons, third-party externals made by all sorts of people. There's one ba made by my dad in here, in here somewhere. Uh, spout that's made by my dad. Um, but the ones that we want are rainbow synth building blocks. So if you can find rainbow synth building blocks and click that or and click install if it's not in, already installed. Maybe it's installed by default, I'm not sure. And the other one that we're going to want was right at the start, which is the um, guitar pedals, rainbow guitar pedals. So if you can install both of those, I think it might have been the second workshop we were talking about the rainbow, rainbow guitar pedals package. Mm. Yeah, great. So um, the first thing we're actually going to do is copy one of these guitar pedals, create some presets, and then export it as a VST. So we can do this really quickly, and we don't actually need to do any patching. We can just do copying and copying and pasting, which is like half of working in Max is copying and pasting, opening opening help patches, copying the help patches, gluing the help patches together. So that's that's. That's just how we do it. So if you hit launch from the package manager or from the rainbow guitar pedals package manager. Okay, good to know. Thanks. That's okay. I'll, 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 I'll run through this while that's installing. It's super straightforward. I think there's, uh, I think there's samples and stuff in there. So is everything uh, okay. so the package is a little bigger than your average package. Yeah, it's okay. custom samples. But if it looks like everyone hit install, like that's <laughs> <laughs> Using all of Australia, no matter what. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll walk through the process. It's, it's really, really straightforward. You'll be able to do it after seeing it once. So um, the signal flow for our patch here is, um, you'll notice I've got these little red and white boxes down here. I don't think we've used any sends and receives yet, but send, send S tilde is um, a send. It's basically a virtual patch cord, so anywhere there's an S tilde left, that's going to be received by R tilde left. It's exactly the same as having a patch cord that goes from there to there. But it just lets us make our patch tidier, um, and I tend to color code my sends and receives just because I like being able to see what's going on. Um, from the inspector, so if you pick any object and hit um, control I or command I, then you've got all of these options for styling and border colors normally what I change. There's a little paint bucket icon up the top bar as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, no. Look at that. that's a very good way. Maybe. I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Um, so the process that I'm going to suggest here is, um, or if we look at the signal flow, we've got one of these synthesizers and it's sending signal through these sends and receives through this rainbow object into a live gain and then out of our audio. In this rainbow object, there's uh, nothing. It's just passing our input straight through to our output. So we're going to copy a guitar pedal and, um, and just jam it in there. So. Um, once your guitar pedals have loaded, just pick pick any effect that you want to export as a VST. I quite like the plate reverb, it sounds really nice. And um, double click on the rainbow patch inside the example patch. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. So I'm going to hit Control E to go into edit mode, Control A to, to select all, Control C to copy and Control W to close and then paste that in here. And um, because we've changed the internals of the rainbow um, object, it's reset our inlets and outlets, so we'll need to repatch this. So uh, there's a lot, quite a few components that still... That's okay. Yeah. It's all right. 
Tupu, tupu, tupu. It seems like the sim building blocks one was quicker, is that right? Yeah. Do you yeah. want to demo one from sim building blocks or will that mess things up? Um, it's not in my script, but we can. Also, uh... Sorry, ignore. No, no, it's fine. Max has also gone a little bit weird, so uh, let's uh, just see what's going on here. Building, building, building. There we go. So there's a um, plate reverb on there, and that's very quiet. And if I go over to the context menu on my rainbow object and look at attributes, here should be yeah here are the, here are the parameters that are inside of this inside of this um, rainbow object. So we've got decay should have wet dry somewhere in here mix. And so that's one way we can access the parameters. But what we've essentially done is like we've just we've just pasted in a patch that we can now edit. To, a, to our heart's content. So maybe you wanted like a ridiculously long reverb or a ridiculously dark reverb or some other kind of ridiculous reverb. Rather than patching it all together by yourself, just pull in, a, pull in um, an existing patch and then edit it. Um, one thing you might want to do as well when you're exporting a VST is provide some presets. So I know we've sort of flown over this, but I'll just show you where this, how this snapshot system works. So if I go to uh, I'll add in some other parameters that I might want to change. Do, 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 size. Okay, I'll just do these. So let's go maximum size, maximum jitter, maximum mix. If I select my rainbow object with my patch unlocked, over here there's the uh, snapshot button. If I click show snapshots, this is where we can store the state of our rainbow object to be able to recall later in our max patch. But any snapshots, snapshots that we store can also be exported as presets for our VST. So when you're developing your VST, you might make a max jig like this, where we've got our effect somewhere in our signal chain. You can tweak it to your heart's content and then make some, make some presets. So we'll do that just by hitting this add new snapshot button down the bottom. Dunk. Uh, dunk. Okay, it must have uh, overwritten my untabbed one. I'm actually going to delete them all and then add a new one. And I'm going to double click this and call it uh, max or maximum because everything is maximum. And then we'll make a little one. I'm just sort of guessing. And now you'll notice my snapshot snapshots have sort of disappeared and that's because I don't have anything selected at the moment. So here it says patcher snapshots. This is a snapshot for all of the for the state of my entire patcher. That's a little bit of a gotcha. We need to make sure that our rainbow object is selected to store our snapshots inside our inside our snapshot window. So I'll add a new one and I'll call this one minimum. And now we've got two presets ready to go. So we can export our rainbow object just like we normally would. I'll go to export and um, audio plugin export. And in my case, I want to export a VST3 for Windows, um, but you can also select for Mac, Windows, Linux, or an AU for Mac. Um, and we've gone through a couple of times setting these settings now, but the main ones that we might want to hit are these three here, plugin name, pl plugin manufacturer, plugin, uh, the, your company, your code. And then we want to make sure that we include our presets. And I think that's all we want to do. Um, so I'm going to call this uh, Zverb. And I am Zilco, and this will be Z001. Um, I'm also going to choose a directory. So I found having a working directory is quite a good way to, to work on your VSTs because you're often sort of replacing them. And in pretty much every host that I've played with, you can set a custom VST directory. So it seems to be a good workflow. But you could also just save this directly to your default. Oops, don't know what that is. Okay. 
to it. Let's uh, oh. Black powder. Now I'm going to hit export. This is going <laughs> to maybe collide with some of you downloading downloading the pedals. Has the pedals downloaded for anyone? No. no. <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> I might get my phone and hotspot. Oh, yeah. Oh, is it really good? Is it really not? Yeah, I feel like it's. it's I mean, don't we all get like something? endless data on our phones anyway? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not super. It shouldn't take that long. Sometimes yeah. Rocky yeah. M can just. It's not critical. You can you can play with that at home. There'll be a recording of this, and you've yeah. got the um, blog post. We've got some other things to look at as well. But the main thing is um, is just uh, encouraging you to cheat by using existing existing things. Cool. So while you're downloading those, I've got a new VSD plugin in here. So yeah. there it is, Zverb, and we can run it in whatever we want. Reap is sort of the standard, hey? Do, 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 do. Uh, you know, we're talking about stealing things. <laughs> and then there it is. And you'll also notice that down here in presets, we've got maximum preset and minimum preset. Yeah. So yeah, cool. it's really easy to set up presets. It's like this whole process. I mean, we just made a VSD plugin that's kind of kind of bananas. But that's the workflow. Any questions about any of that? We're good. It's pretty straightforward. It's like worryingly straightforward. <laughs> um, Okay, cool. So that's exporting a um, an effect. Now th this next part you won't need you won't need the guitar pedals for. So we can we can carry on. Let's let us let us look at exporting an instrument. I, before we do, I just want to point out some of the things that are going on in this particular instrument. I've got a little keyboard here, and it's a um, I've, I've set this K slider to be polyphonic so we can play multiple notes at once. You'll notice um, if you're, where I think I, there's a pretty good, I can take a pretty good guess that most of us here are musically inclined and you can probably hear maybe that those um, notes aren't standard tuning. Um, and this is using a Blackwood scale which I think is a five limit something something something, don't really know. But we've got a couple of other options here. And if I turn the notes off and turn them back on, or if you do with headphones, you'll hear the, uh, the tuning system change. That's being achieved in here. This is sort of the world's simplest synthesizer, right? We've got a note in. We're using the velocity as a gate, and then we're just using a simple saw. So we take the note value, we turn that MIDI note into a frequency to control the frequency of our saw, and we take the velocity, just divide it by 127. So when the note's on, we get a 1, when the note's off, we get a 0, and we just multiply the signal so it's, there's no, no envelope or anything. But up here, you'll notice we've got these objects here, Scala.list. Scala.list lets us import microtonal scales. So I'll open up the help here. Um, and the context in which I think this is really, um, well, it's useful in a lot of contexts, but Rainbow lends itself quite well to building hardware devices. So having something like Scala, where we're able to incorporate microtonal tuning systems sort of blows open a lot of the possibilities for creating um, odd instruments. Um, Scala is quite complicated. I haven't really got my head entirely around it yet, but there is a link. I just hit this little bang here. There's a link to a list of scales, and there are heaps of them. Heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps, heaps of them. So you can, you can 
pick a scale or a set of scales that you like and just copy the names. And there's a description on the right, how many notes exist in the scale. Um, here you go, Bellabog 31. So this is Bellabog 31, Hobbit in 626 tet, commas 3000, okay, I'm not even gonna bother, but let's copy it. Six hundred twenty-six ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and Scala, oops, there we go. Scala dot list lets us just create a list of scales that we might want to switch between, and then we can switch between them in real time. Um, Rainbow is a little bit different to regular Max in that we don't have messages like we'd normally have in Max. In Max you could probably do something like, uh, I don't know, you could send a message like scale Belog to something. Um, but we can't do that in Rainbow because if you create a message box and I try and say scale Belog, will it complain? It'll probably complain. Didn't complain. Didn't complain. I didn't think we could do that. Anyway, um, we can't send messages the same way that we would in Rainbow. So we use these set objects. And Scala.list um, sends a message to set scale, which, you, which sets our MIDI to frequency object. So it sets all our notes coming in to be one of these scales. The other thing that might be a little bit different to what we've done so far is that this param um, is using this an enum property. So normally when we're creating parameters, we're thinking about like dials and sliders. So you might have a minimum of zero and a maximum of one and then a default value. But sometimes we'll be working with properties that don't, uh, that can't be expressed so easily in numbers. And this is one of these cases where rather than picking a scale from a list with zero, one and two, um, as we would traditionally do in most programming languages, here we can actually um, specify the names of the, of the scales. Um, and this is just for readability. Um, these could be anything, so we could call them, for example, scale 1, scale 2, scale 3, um, but I've used the same names as the scales that I'm using here. And we'll see what happens when we, when we export this as a, um, as a plugin. So let, let's do that now. I'm going, oops. So process is the same as before. Export plugin. Um, VST. I've already got a name, microsynth. I'm probably going to make this Z002. Um, and I don't know if I've stored any presets for this, but I'll leave include presets there. Um, and I've left cogen polyphony as linked. So that means it's going to take this number here, polyphony 8, and it's going to make an 8 voice polyphonic synth for us. Then I'll say export. Oh no, I can't remember where I have exporting. Any questions about any of this while well, this is a uh, building? Irrigating authorization dictionary. Is that? Do you still need to get that BST authorization from Steinberg, or is that all through? I haven't needed to do that. Yeah, I used to do it like many versions ago before it was released. Mm. Anyway, I've seen that authorization dictionary. Angry Red. Oh, it's Rainbow's not authorized. So you've got a lot of cool. rights back. Um, sure. So I'm going to jump back in Reaper and uh, I might need to rescan my directory actually. Yeah, Tom. Did you get a, yeah, you got a license and everything? Yeah, awesome. And here's our new here's our new plugin. So this is a microsynth, or I called it a microsynth. And um, the main thing here is that you'll notice our scale property is uh, named, not numbered. So we've got named a named parameter, um, and that's the enum property that we used for the parameter.
and uh, I've got one preset which is just the default preset. But we've now also got Reaper creating um, microtonal music, which you probably do in Reaper anyway, but now we can do it this way. Exactly why we can't hear that, I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay, but it's there. If it doesn't make sound for anyone else, uh, let me know because uh, I don't know why that's not working. Any questions about any of that? All good? It is pretty straightforward. Cool. So let's have a look at the third third rainbow object. The synthesizer side of this plugin of this uh, rainbow object here is exactly the same. So it's just a, a saw with a note in being gated by our velocity, and I'm using the same scales. You can put in your own scales here as well. You can actually set custom scales with Scala. There's a little language for specifying them. I find it really confusing, but you might find it easier. Something that we have going here that um, is a little bit uh, perhaps a little bit new is that we've got a metronome and this metronome is locked to our global transport. So what's super nice about working with VSTs or one of the nice things about working in VSTs and exporting them is you can create something that's locked to the transport of your DAW. So if you wanted to do a tempo sync delay or some sort of arpeggiator or some sort of weird rhythm generator like this, then um, it's going to stay in sync with your DAW. Um, and that's using the at lock parameter here. Um, so 4n here means quarter note, so I'm creating a metronome with a quarter note locked to our transport and I'm turning it on automatically with the active, active argument. And then up here I have a parameter and again I've used enum, so I'm naming some of these properties. So I've got a whole note, a dotted half note, a half note, a dotted quarter note, a quarter note, etc. Um, if you want to read more about how Max works with um, musical time, there's a guide here on, um, on this particular kind of syntax. And um, we can convert between this syntax and ticks. So I've just copied this out of the documentation and specified some of the uh, subdivisions that I want to use here in a list. Um, so what's this do? Well. Um, if I was to just use, what am I looking for, not poly, subdivision, if I just use subdivision, ah, actually, I'll go back to what I had before. So um, one thing I've done in this rainbow object is I have set per voice Oh yeah, I've set it as an argument here. This argument at the end of my rainbow object. Expose voice params, one. So um, Tom mentioned this in, in one of the other um, workshops. We can take all of the, parameter, all of the um, parameters that are inside our rainbow object and we can sp specify them per voice. So this little metronome in here, we have one metronome per voice and we can set the subdivision per voice which means we can pretty quickly get some interesting rhythms and the um, I think by default the way that rainbow is working is it's round robining the um, the voices so the first voice will get a, quarter, a dotted quarter note, the second voice will get a dotted eighth note, the third voice will get an eighth, an eighth note and then if you add another voice that will um, I don't know if it will take over actually well, let's see. Yeah, sure, they're still... Mm. Um, and so, yeah, you can just play around with these and get some, get some interesting qu quasi-polyrhythms. Nice, that's, that's a cool batch, bro. Yeah, it's fun. I, it's, I, want, I was just... Mm. Um, and in, in a, with, a, with a microtonal thing, so we've got a micro, uh, 
polytonal, um, polyrhythmic microtonal synthesizer. Um, and we can go through the same proce process for exporting them. Um, one thing that we want to check when we're exporting this particular one is that we turn on Expose Per Voice Params. I'll export this. Oh, yes, that's a good point. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Thank you. On, I get, it looks like it went on for some people automatically. Yes. Ah, interesting. So down the down the bottom, there's a little play button. I think your computer might just be cursed. It is a bit. Yeah. It's my live performance. Perfect. That's great. That ele that element of risk will make it really good. Um, this is the life of a Max programmer though. Like it's it, I, I always get myself still I'm like, why is the patch not working? Yeah. Oh, what is my mom? Yeah, I've got to turn it on at the power. Yeah. <laughs> turn the hub phones off. Yeah. Or the age of where it just never works and you reboot the computer and then it works. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I did find a little bit of a quirk exporting snapshots when we're using per voice. I'll see if it. Um, oh. do, have you come across that? No. So. Here, yeah, I think what ha so the per voice properties weren't coming coming weren't being expressed in the presets. I think what's happening is it's the global one is overriding, so it takes a snapshot of all of the parameters, mm -hmm. and that global parameter overrides the per voice ones. I think that's what might be going on. Yeah, I do think I think there might be. Mm. Um, okay, we've exported. Oh. So I'll rescan my plugins, go to plugins, and we should have a new. Should have called it. Oh yeah, poly micro poly. Add. Do you find anything special for doing the menu? Was there the export menu? No, it should be. Should the main thing is you want to make sure that exposed voice params is ticked, um, but I think that should be done by default, yeah. and then just make sure you're exporting to the right. Target, um, so Windows or whatever. Um, yeah, there's the so these this preset's supposed to set different different subdivisions, um, but it all gets overwritten by this this one up here. Does yeah, you know I just I I just assume these things will get sorted out. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that might be worth. Dropping a line to the forum button. Yeah, cool. Is, is a, is yeah. Um, you can also set a separate scale per voice. Don't really know why you'd want to do that, but you can. Um, and if this is if this is working. Microtonal. Yeah. <laughs> poly microtonal polyrhythm poly poly. Um, so. <laughs> Um, I don't know why I can't hear anything in Reaper at the moment, but um, yeah, it's doing the same thing it's doing in Max, except this is just going to be an example that we can now control the speed of this synthesizer using the transport of Reaper now. Is it that Max, like uh, in Windows, can you have Reaper and Max both using the same audio? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't really. I don't use Reaper. It's a little bit. Um, it might be, yeah. That's yeah. Is it coming through headphones? Tis not. No. no. Um, Why is this one? It's just a monolith signal. 
Huh. Oh, yeah, same. oh yeah, it might actually be a mono instrument, you know, um, that could be, it is just a mono instrument. So um, if you wanted to make it a stereo instrument, you could just make another out, call it out two, and then um, send your output to that out two as well. Now, now it's quasi stereo. <clears throat> any questions about any of that? Yeah. The parameter for polyphony, is that something that can be exposed to the VST I don't know. interface as well? Like, say, from Ableton? I think it's once it's exported. Um, I mean, you can, you can get around it by setting a max voice count, and then you can have sub patches, and you can kind of mute them to turn oh, them okay. off. Or, or you can mute voices and turn them off, so you can kind of manually do it. OK. Mm. Yeah, you can probably work around a lot of this just by patching in Rainbow. Okay. Cool. Um, hey, we've hit most of these things, right? Except for the guitar pedal thing. Has it, have, have people's guitar pedals oh, begun to work? Yes, yes, yes. Woo! Oh, okay, cool. That can be the... We can, we can, that, that's good. It means we can tackle this little bonus thing and then we can just play with guitar pedals and see if we can get them to run in weird things. So um, one of the things that I find, um, one of the things that excites me about Rainbow is as a composition environment, um, especially for things like video games where we can create dynamic, dynamic music. Um, Rainbow sort of fills this niche that a lot of things weren't, weren't filling. Um, but composing music music in Max is um, often a little bit clunky. So when we're create, for example, if you wanted to create a chord, often you end up creating lists that sort of look like this, like uh, you got to think really hard. Like if I want to make a major chord, I've got to remember which note is 60. I can never remember. And then I've got to figure out what the next note in a major chord is, which would be like 64, I think, and then add numbers 67. That's probably wrong. So that might be a major chord. But you can't tell it's a major chord, and um, and it's just really confusing. So um, and then in Rainbow we've got this added limitation in that everything is working with signals. So we're working with floating point numbers, that is numbers that have a decimal point. Um, and um, so I've got this crazy idea which you can steal. Someone's probably already done this, but. Um, this is a way of encoding harmonic information as a floating point number. So I call them intimals, or I was calling them intimals, and then I changed it to decibels. <laughs> um, it doesn't really matter. It's a silly idea. Um, there's a little, a little thing on the website here, concept formerly known as intimals. And so this is just, a, just an outline of, of a way of encoding um, a chord voicing in a, in a floating point value. So the number to the left of the decimal defines the root in semitones, and so that would be like in reference to some reference pitch. So here, this this one would be um, 12 semitones below your reference pitch, and then the numbers to the right of the floating point um, defi define rising semitone steps for each subsequent voice. So if you were to look at this here, where it's um, zero, zero is our root note, and that's the same as our reference pitch. And then the next note is seven semitones up, and then the next note after that is four semitones after that. And that gives us this, which is like a major chord without the third. But what that means is that all major chords look like this. That's a C major chord. Oops. That would be a D major chord. That would be an E major chord. <laughs> No, there'd just be a reference in, in relation to a reference pitch. Where do you set the reference? Um, anywhere you want. So like, um, it's just like, so like, yeah. So like, yeah, like, well, like, so I don't know where, where am I doing it? I'm doing it here. I'm adding 64 semitones, just like arbitrarily. Um, so, so, so it's just, just because you can't, you don't want to have something that's like zero hertz. Ah, uh, here. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty, this is pretty buggy at the moment, but it's just sort of a proof of concept. So what you end up with is this, you can go. 
And you could probably do. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, I did that static hand. Yeah. Like, <laughs> deadly, bro. Black kick Yeah. Oh my god. Um, you know, so what this potentially means is you could probably like add chords together or subtract them or just like pipe them around, pipe them around Rainbow in in other ways and um, yeah. So feel you, you can steal this idea. Please steal it. It's awesome. Right? Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I thought I thought it would be cool for like, um, I mean, I don't know, like in maybe maybe um, interfacing with hardware gear or something. The signals get a bit funny. Like once you go past when I was first playing with it, they get all sort of warbly at, at once you get up to like higher precision. So they seem to stop working at like I made a note somewhere. Um, and I think if you had like if you're actually plugging it in with a cable. The higher notes will start to fluctuate, so it gets a bit it gets a bit glitchy. But for um, like three note chords, four note chords, it all works pretty well, um, and it becomes quite easy to read. So like this is stacked fifths, right? So a fifth is seven, is seven semitones. So that's like the uh, the math the mathsy uh, math rock power chord. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is the sort of thing that I'd like to encourage in Rainbow is like using it as a composition environment because it's a nice little little language, and then you can export your Rainbow compositions and like embed them in stuff and make yeah, them do I also stuff. Yeah, like this idea like this could go on a Raspberry Pi and be like a MIDI translator, so people could you know put it into a MIDI keyboard. Mm. And, uh, yeah. and also web export because if you've ever played doing anything with bloody points in JavaScript, there's rounding errors everywhere. So <laughs> yes. you get really weird <laughs> stuff happening. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I expect you would. Um, so yeah, I mean that's just a that's a, a proof of concept floating in there. So you can probably combine that with some of these other <laughs> with these other patches. But for the for the time we got left, we got like 12 minutes. I think the thing that I'd suggest we have a go at is um, exporting a guitar pedal or exporting one of these instruments and just trying to get them into your DAWs um, and seeing if you can get something something weird happening. And then we'll we'll help you make weird things. <laughs>